And Moses now is simply going, we're going above the level of the community, particular congregation, up to the, uh, the whole generation as one big monadology. So he's simply going one level further there. That's nothing so much so new. And the little school children, well, that's just the little monads that create the monad that are encompassed in the big monads. The little gestalts encompass the, and the big gestalts. The, each little gestalt, each little little situation, which is with its uh, impasses and oppositions, and its vibrations and its hybrid system, each one um, is encompassed in the, in the bigger ones. So just like in my own, let's go back to this this DreamWorks session that we had here. The the, the uh, Scary, scary uh, dream. All right. So by the end of the session there, we had this idea of, I, the, the, the monster says, I am the word and you are the prophet. Um, in terms of Aristotle, we'd say, the monster is saying, I am the final cause. And Gestalt therapy would say, I am the coming solution. And uh, Plato would say, I am the... Uh, the platonic idea of the macrocosm. And you, Franklin, are the vessel of the spirit, the, uh, the prophet, you're the, you're the dialectic that's unfolding here, uh, uh, the river that's flowing towards me, the great ocean. The story of the heart of the world and the spring. There is a mountain, and on that mountain there stands a rock. The spring gushes forth from that rock. Now everything has a heart, and the world as a whole has a heart. The heart of the world is a complete form with face, hands, and feet. And even the toenail of that heart is more heart-like than any other heart. The mountain and the spring stand at one end of the world, and the heart is at the other. The heart stands facing the spring, yearning to draw near to it. It is filled with wild yearning and constantly cries out in its longing to approach the spring. The spring too longs for the heart. Now, if the heart is filled with so great a desire to draw near the spring, why does it not simply do so? And as soon as it begins to move towards the mountain, the mountain top, where the spring emerges, disappears from you, and the light of the heart flows from that spring. So if it were to allow the spring to vanish from its sight, it would die. If the heart were to die, the entire world would be destroyed. For the heart of the world is the life of all things. How could the world exist without a heart? For this reason, the heart can never approach the spring, but stands opposite, looks at it, and longs. All right. If we think of that whole dream work session as a generation which has five, uh, say, cities in it, each, each uh, of the main elements of the dream work was a city. There was the Franklin City, there was the Silence City, there was the, uh, the Corridor City, there was the, um, the people, the scientists, uh, the city, five cities. And there was the monster city, five cities, and they would, and the whole dream work would be the generation and the um, the big idea, the existential message of the dream that was coming to emerging at the end there um, was, in a sense, the the Moses idea, the encompassing monadology of those of, those, of that generation. So any dream work session that I did, that I would do, uh, that went on for any length of time, would have this overall integrative process going on, and the final step of that particular uh, convergence or collection, platonic collection of, um, of uh, awareness moments would be called the Moses of that generation, the generation encompassing all the cities. So we got that, we cracked that one, and we have the, the children. And the sanctuary, again, is the, is the uh, flow of awareness moments, the bubble of awareness, the phenomenology, so now I think we decoded that one. And know that in every generation, you know, or let's say every dream work session, there is a shepherd, a Moses, which is the, uh, 
the existential message of that dream that emerges at the end of the session. For Moses was the faithful shepherd, and now that's the one that's faithful, moving up the spiral towards the ultimate integration in God. And this shepherd makes a sanctuary, and this, this uh, overall uh, pure process, uh, this um, final cause or uh, in, uh, coming solution, somehow like a magnet pulls the whole process forward and creates, allows the, the person that's doing the process, the, the, the uh, dream work, person working on dream work, to operate as a kind of a sanctuary. And little school children, those are each particular moment of the uh, awareness process, uh, now I'm aware of this, now I'm aware of that, and now I identify with this, and the, uh, now I identify with that. These little school children receive the undefiled breath, which is the pure idea that they're getting from this overall encompassing thing, magnet that's pulling them forward. Breath of their mouths, the mouths are the, um, remember that's the uh, oppositions, uh, two sides fighting it out together, vibrating as a hybrid from the sanctuary, again. And no, at every generation, there is a shepherd, a Moses, for Moses was the faithful shepherd, and this shepherd makes a sanctuary. And no, little school children receive the undefiled breasts of their mouths from this sanctuary. Sanctuary. When a child begins to read and enters the study of Torah, Torah is the way, by the way, from the, uh, there are two roots of the word Torah, Hora'ah, instruction, but the one we want is Latur, to seek, search, search, to grope, to seek. So this, the, the way, the search. When a child begins to read and enters the study of Torah, this spiritual search, the truth path, he is first taught the verse, and he called to Moses. So the child, in a sense, each of these moments of awareness reaches out towards the coming solution, the final cause, the, uh, the existential message of the dream that uh, he is hoping and expecting will arrive.
Hey, look, look, everybody. You see that white dog? That's my dog, Barker. Woof, woof, woof. I followed the wagon the whole night. Barker, Barker, it's so nice to see you. I'm glad you finally noticed me. Woof, woof. Too bad, foolish Barker. Hey, do you think I'm going to a feast? You know me, Samuel. Woof. It doesn't matter to me where you are going. I just want to come along. Woof, woof. That's fine, Barker. But in case you are interested, we are not going to wait for a party. It is into exile that I am going. What do you think of that? Hey, Barker? Woof! Woof! I want to be with you always, my dear friend. You'll see. I'm not just coming along for a good time. Woof, woof! With their early marriages, they multiply rapidly. Every frog is fair and allowed to live. The Jewish population is a catastrophe. They're the last half of them dying from their plagues. They're the last half of them dying from their plagues. Their livelihood they they turn to cheap feet and tricks. Hard work they absolutely shun. They live at the expense of the working class. They're the last half of them die from their plagues. They're the last half of them die from their plagues. The national welfare soon exhaust. The workers they'll bring to ruin. The Christian population they'll soon suppress. Better than half the them die from their plates. Better than half the them die from their plates. Listen here, have you heard the news? Mighty Russia, the country of the Jews. The country of the Jews, laughing south of Europe. 